Jenks, what are you feeling in game one of the Western Conference Finals? I'm feeling that I'm tired of hearing the lyric, the best thing about being a woman in my head right now. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm feeling. I need to erase that and bleach my brain. You know, I'm going to go Nuggets here, minus six and a half. I should have bet it yesterday like we were talking about it, Nuggets minus five. I And even the series price has increased. Yesterday it was Nuggets minus 155. Now it's Nuggets minus 155. I just believe in what we've seen from the Nuggets all season long. We've talked about trends on this show and which trends have held true throughout the postseason and which ones we can't really trust. One trend we have been able to trust is the Nuggets at home. And they were awesome during the regular season. They were tied with the Warriors as the best against the number team at home, 30-16-1 and one when playing in Denver. They're also 40-7 and seven straight up at home this season. So Denver was a wagon, is a wagon when playing in the Mile High City. And they're a little bit more rested than L.A. We're seeing all that money come in on the Nuggets. And I just think they're the right side here. So even at 6.5, Obviously, would have loved it much better at five yesterday when we were talking about it. And you asked me, do you think the line will move in the direction of the Lakers and the Nuggets? And I couldn't come up with an answer. Well, now I have the answer. Should have had it yesterday, but I still like it at six and a half. Now I feel the need to put a Shania Twain, uh, Twain spin on all of these angles. So, oh Nikola Jokic averaging 30 points a game during the postseason. Jenks, does this impress you much? Or do you think it ends, <laughs> ends here against the number one defense in the, in the postseason? The Lakers, I'll give them this. The defense has been incredible. And the Yo Nikola Jogic has been unstoppable, but he hasn't faced a big man yet like Anthony Davis. We know we can block the shots. We know he's mm -hmm. one of the premier defenders in the league. So do we think this comes to an end? Because I'll say this, Nikola Jokic averaging against the Lakers during the regular season just 23 points per game. So are we expecting another big game from Jokic here? Do we think he falls back to earth? Yeah, any man of mine better step up in the postseason. And Nikola Jokic has done that. He's been awesome. He hasn't fallen off like Joel Embiid. This guy has stepped it up. He has been unstoppable. Chelsea, we often talk about artificial intelligence on this show. So you were telling me about chat Riz GPT. I know what chat GPT is. I've used it. I've invested in a couple of companies that are into AI because it's the future. Probably really dumb and I'm going to lose my money. But what is chat Riz GPT? Please enlighten this old man with soft bones. What in the hell is chat Riz GPT? Okay, so this Stanford student believes that he has found the cure from when for when you get tongue tied on a date he invented riz gpt a monocle that you wear that displays chat gpt to tell you what to say he calls it c-a-a-s charisma as a service do you think this actually works like can you imagine isn't this like the plot of so many movies is like somebody's in your ear telling you what to say it never ends well First of all, it's a monocle? <laughs> Who in the hell is going to wear a mod? That's the real issue. Like, forget about a computer telling you what to say. Like, if somebody shows up with a monocle, you're going to be like, let me continue this date. Are you going on a date with the Monopoly guy? Like, what are you talking about? A monocle? What? This is a terrible idea. Nothing to idea. see here, folks. Just Nothing a monocle. Just an everyday run-of-the-mill monocle that most college students will be wearing. God, like... It's so funny to me that people who are so smart sometimes miss out on these very common sense things. Do you know people like that that are like very book smart, yes. but they're not common sense smart? This is what this guy is. Yes. And by the way, why would you want to interact with someone? You're not really interacting with someone if a computer is telling them what to say. <laughs> what time is it? Well, let me check my pocket watch. And they just pull it out while they're looking at it through their monocle. Like, on every level, this is the worst idea ever. Why, you're not even interacting with a real human at that point. Right. Do you want to date a computer? Like, I don't think you do. I feel like the success rate on this cannot be good. 
Like, do you think right. Pete Davidson uses this? Hell no. He's got a much more potent weapon, I think, uh, that we probably shouldn't talk about here on the radio. But still, this is not what dating is. And plus, if you get a girl this way, don't you think at some point she's going to realize that this is an act? Is Like I said, isn't this the plot of like so many movies and books? Like somebody was like, isn't this the plot of Cyrano? Sometimes I hate this world. Here's the thing. If you're having problems <laughs> having a conversation with someone and you don't know what to say, you know what that means? Maybe this isn't the person for you. Then you say, you know what? I really don't have a great chemistry here. That's okay. It may be a little bit awkward, but this tells me that maybe I should go elsewhere. Doesn't mean it's a bad person. Just means that this isn't the person for me. Do you want to fall in love with someone who's constantly giving you answers from a computer? You don't even <laughs> really even know the person. This is the worst thing I've ever heard. I just cannot believe that it's with a monocle of all. This guy's smarter than I could ever even dream about being. But the one thing I would say is if someone came to me with this idea, I would say, look, you got to make this glasses, guys. When you take an early look at the field here, what are you thinking? So, as you guys know, really, when we've been betting golf all year, it's been the big three, right, of Scheffler, Rahm, and Rory. And what sticks out to me, obviously, is now Scheffler and Rahm are right next to each other. Scotty's plus 750, Rahm's 800, and now Rory has dropped all the way to plus 1,400. Rory's wife is a is from Rochester, so she's from the area of where Oak Hill is. Rory is a member here, so he knows the course pretty well. I know he hasn't been in good form. But now that it keeps climbing to like 14 to 1, I mean, just seeing that number next to Rory's name kind of makes me want to take a stab at him. With that being said, two names I like this week, guys. John Rahm, plus 800. I watched all these golfers get interviewed. Tony Finau got interviewed. Um, Justin Thomas got interviewed. All these guys were talking about the importance off the tee. If you drive the ball in the rough at Oak Hill, you're dead. So John Rahm is the best golfer on the planet off the tee, strokes gain off the tee. So I like him at plus 800. And then Xander Shoffley is another guy. Nobody plays well, better consistently in majors than Xander. He doesn't win, but he's always top 15, top 20. He gets some top 10s. He's plus 1,600. It seems like the harder the golf course, the better he plays. Oak Hill's a beast. It is a monster. So I don't expect long shots to really contend here. I think it's going to be, there's really only like 10 or 15 guys that can win this week. Rahm and Xander are two of them. So that's what I would target. But guys, Rory at 14 to 1. I mean, that that is starting to pique my interest. If that gets to like 15, I think I'm going to have to play it. Which one of the teams was the most disappointing in getting eliminated in round two this year? New York, Philadelphia, Golden State, or the team we were just referencing, the Phoenix Suns. Who are you most disappointed in? Take your pick. I'm going to go with the Warriors. Just because, A, they, this is the defending champion in the NBA. So they certainly, just a year ago, had the talent to win it all. And I think it's how they went out. The Lakers are playing great basketball, so I don't want to take anything away from the Lakers. And full credit to them for stepping it up in the second half of the season. They play great defense. But I did not anticipate the Warriors going out with a whimper in a game six where Steph Curry scored 30-something points, 32 points, was not good shooting from the field, and not a single other player on the Warriors roster scored in double figures. That's amazing to me. They never led in that game, not once. The Lakers led from start to finish. So to hear Steve Kerr go from you know a year ago, they're hoisting the title, and then afterwards, Steve Kerr saying, this is not a championship team. It's the same team, essentially. Andrew Wiggins disappeared. Clay Thompson disappeared. Draymond Green disappeared. Jordan Poole disappeared. So I'm not necessarily stunned that the Lakers won the series, but I am surprised that the Warriors went out the way that they did. So I'm going to go with Golden State. Yeah, are we letting off the Bucks just scot-free here? I feel like they still need to be scolded on how disappointing their season was. Damn it, I had a ticket on the Milwaukee Bucks to win it all. They didn't even get it out of the first round. So that's who I'm most disappointed in. But of these four teams, I think I'm going to go Philly. Because Golden State, here's the thing. They weren't even a good team during the regular season. Couldn't win games on the road. So I think we kind of saw some red flags with Golden State. And people just kind of push them to the side saying, 
oh, well, they're the Warriors. They'll get it together. You've got to remember, this is a team where two of the teammates uh, got in a physical fight. Draymond Green <laughs> punching Jordan Poole. This is a team you thought was going to win a championship? Hell no. Uh, and then for Phoenix, they traded away all their depth. I think we saw that red mm -hmm. flag coming from a mile away as well. But for Philly, the way that their MVP, Joel Embiid, the MVP of the entire league, had 15 points in the final game of the season <laughs> and then proceeded to throw his entire team under the bus, I think that is the most disappointing end to a season of all these teams.